hope is going to be one fast video. <laughs> of course, I say that about all videos. But the reason I say that is because today is Purim. It is the celebration of the, not the fast of Esther, but of the reading of the Megillah, of the actual time that Jews around the world go out and get drunk. <laughs> you know, like, kind of like the, what goes on in New Orleans, you know, that uh, celebration down there where they have the parade, and they all get kind of like Mardi Gras, you know, and Fat Tuesday and all that kind of stuff. Well, Jewish culture has its own version of that, you see, because today is the one day, well, there's two days that they do this, but one of the days that actual Orthodox Jews and Jews that should know better, that shouldn't be doing it, but don't actually keep the law correctly sometimes, will go out and get smashed out of their minds, or yeshiva students will, and celebrate Purim, because this is the day of celebration that God actually gave to the children of Israel, as well as to us, all of us, whether you're a Jew, or I'm a Jew, or I'm a Jew, but it's whether you're a Jew or not, it doesn't matter, because your heritage has been grafted into the tree of life, so to speak, that God has foreordained us to all be one of those that God has chosen to inherit eternal life, which is in His Son, which makes us all sons and daughters of God, so that we become likened unto Jesus, so we become likened unto His heritage. So our heritage, we become children of Abraham, and by the Spirit we become no longer Jew, nor Gentile, barbarian, Scythian, or female, nor female, but at the same time we still are. So guess what? You kind know, of don't understand all that, right? Sure. You got it. So anyways, one of the fun things on Purim is, you know, to go on a parade. Well, we can't record that. It's to do, you know, Hamilton's, you know, little Kragans and making noise and celebrating and reading the book of Esther, which is what we call the Megillah. You know, is that the scroll that you know, Esther is? You kind of read it like that or read it like this. You actually read it like this. But some people, you know, they let them do what they want to do. Anyways, in celebration of that, you know, I know this is kind of challenging for Gentiles because I know in America, you know, most Americans have this real serious problem with alcohol. And most Jews don't care. <laughs> it's your problem, not mine. So they just go ahead and they have Shabbos and you know you, you got wine. <laughs> and then you know if you're you know in Orthodox community you have Crown Royal, you know, <laughs> especially if you're Hasid, you know. But anyways, the point is I wanted to offer a toast to Moshiach or to Messiah, to Jesus, for the wondrous beauty of His Word that gives us and has allowed us eternal life to come. That by His grace we've been saved. And even though we see how He has done it in the past through working through individual men and women that He's chosen, as you'll see in the book of Esther, in Haman and Esther and Mordecai, um, then I say to you, may you be today more like a Mordecai and not a Haman. And if it's will be, you be a woman, then I pray that you are as Esther and not as Vashti. And I think you'll understand what I mean when we read it. So may this blessing go out to you, and may it be glorious unto God in, in His sight, as He has given us Jesus, His Son. And we praise Him and thank Him. Amen. I needed that. You see... With Crohn's disease, a long time ago when I was in the hospital, it was hilarious. The doctors would send me at lunch and at dinner a can of beer. And it was like, uh, could you make that a Pepsi? I don't drink beer. I hate beer. It's like, blech. It's like, ew, that's gross. You know, and so I never had a problem really with dealing with alcohol, you know, kind of. Because later on when I tried alcohol and stuff, it was like, oh, you know, things that were sweet tasted sweet, things that were bitter taste bitter. If I overdid it, I never really lost control of my mind because I didn't like to. And when I did, I thought I was stupid, so it was kind of like, no, I didn't really get drunk that often when I was young and dumb. But later, when I was sick, you know, they wanted to give me calories, and they said that, you know, this is good for your health, you know. And they, it was a diet that actually was recommended that I have a beer a day, you know. So they'd give it to me either noon or night, you know. So... I never did, and you know the <laughs> some of the people in the VA kind of kept my beer for for them, you know, because <laughs> I told them I didn't want it. Then one day, you know, it was kind of interesting. Was that they accidentally delivered it in the morning, and I had a can of tomato juice too, so I put a little tomato juice in it, you know, because I always thought beer tasted horrible, and kind of stirred it up, you know, a little bit with my finger, you know, in a little tiny glass, and drank it. And I was like, 
that's not bad, you know, because I always needed the carbonation and I needed the calories. So they always thought that the hops would give me the calories. Well, being that I drank wine, you know, I was like, well, you know, I never thought much about it. When I prayed about it, the Lord said, don't worry, you know, I got you covered. <laughs> Somebody out there is going, no, 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 wrong, you can't do that. And I'm going, boy, they, yay, we do. <laughs> No, don't go messianic on me. You know, I don't want you to think that I'm going to put on a keeper and start dominating or something because I don't need a covering on my head. God's my covering. Jesus has become my kiprot. You know, he is my covering. He has been my covering since he placed his banner over me as love. So what we want to do today is we wanted to celebrate with every Jew to raise a glass. I mean, if you could party... And be honest with me. You know this song that they say, because I dance a lot, so I go out dancing every Friday night with my wife, you know, and we don't drink, or we don't drink and we don't uh, gamble, but we go to this casino to go dancing, so it's really a blast. You know, we have lots of fun. People just laugh at us, you know, because we're having a blast, you know. Well, they laugh at me. You know? My wife's a little more conservative dancer, but kind of fun. So anyways, there's a song that says something about, raise your glass, you know, and I don't know what the rest of the words are because I really don't pay attention. <laughs> but if you know that song, then if you could raise a glass to that song of all things, you know, and get all partied out, you know, and doing your dance, you know, and doing your thing, and maybe even twist and shout, who knows, maybe even ballroom dancing, then you could raise a glass to the Jew today because today is a day that they celebrate deliverance. And we know that one day, though it may be kind of a rough way to go, you know, that all Israel will be saved, and if you don't get saved in the meantime, yes, you go to hell. So I just want to clarify this. Any Jew that doesn't know Jesus, that dies today without knowing Jesus, goes to hell, just like anybody else. There's no special, you know, circumstance, no dual covenant thing, no any kind of covenant thing. It is a fact. Rebellion brings huh, disassociation. So, since the children of Israel rebelled against God, Jesus called them sons and daughters of Satan, their father. Unless they repented of their sins and turned towards he whom God had sent to them. Who Messiah, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus, our Lord and Savior. So, in that respect, let's just celebrate the fact that a long time ago, in a faraway land, before there was Iran, <laughs> or Khomeini's, there was the book of Esther. And we're going to read it. Hopefully with no commentary. This is uh, what they call a, what they call a second? A chilada. It's a chilada. It's kind of like a, a beer with clamato in it. So it's got all this tomato juice, but it's got huge amounts of potassium and salts and all kinds of things that would probably make most of you have high blood pressure and get sick. But for me, what it does is that it finally metabolizes my system to be normal, like most of you, because with Crohn's, yeah, you know, unfortunately, people don't understand why I'm still alive, but God kept me alive, and though I'm not healed, I'm kind of sustained by the grace of God, which worships in me, both to do the will of His good pleasure. So this kind of helps my physiology get back to normal. So there's, there's hopefully some potassium in there so that I can retain water because I have a hard time keeping weight on. <laughs> so here's to you, Lord, as we share in the Book of Esther or the Megillah. Megillah. Now, it came, and I may read it fast because we're trying to get through this, and this is like, you know, already spent a lot of time on the video. So, hopefully, who knows? Now, it came to pass in the days of Hajras. This is Hajras, which reigned from India even unto Ethiopia, over 127 provinces. Then, in those days, when the king of Hajras sat on the throne of his kingdom, which was in Shushan, the palace, in the third year of his reign, he made a feast unto all his princes and his servants, the power of Persia and Media, Medea, the nobles and princes of the provinces being all before him, they were present. When he showed the riches of his glorious kingdom and honor of his excellent majesty many days, even a hundred and fourscore days, and when these days were expired, the king made a feast unto all the people that were present in Shushan, the palace, both unto the great and to the small. 
seven days in the court of the garden of the king's palace, where were whites and greens and blue hangings fastened with cords of fine linen and purple to silver rings and pillars of marble. Beds were of gold and silver upon a pavement of red and blue and white and black marble. Sounds cool, doesn't it? <laughs> Sounds like Mardi Gras. And they gave them drink in vessels of gold, the vessels being diverse one from another, and the royal wine in abundance according to the state of the king. And the drinking was according to the law. None did compel, for so the king had appointed to all the officers of his house that they should do according to every man's pleasure. Also Vashti the queen made a feast for the women in the royal house which belonged to King Ahasuerus. On the seventh day, when the heart of the king was merry with wine, he commanded Nehemiah, Bizdath, Har Harbona, Bigtha, Abakta, Zethar, and Carcass, the seven chamberlains that they served in the presence of Ahasuerus the king, to bring Vashti the queen before the king with the crown royal to show, notice crown royal, it wasn't the drink, it was a crown that was royal. <laughs> I know, you know, never mind hussies. It's a Jewish thing. You'll get it someday. <laughs> so the crown royal to show the people and the princess her beauty, for she was fair to look upon. But the queen Vashti refused to come at the king's commandment by his chamber ladies. Therefore was the king very wroth, mad, and his anger burned in him. Then the king said to the wise men which knew the times, for so was the king's manner toward all that knew the law and judgment. And the next unto him was Karshim... And the next person, that, in other words, the people that were next to him, or that were there, were Karshina, Jethar, Admatha, Tarshish, Muriz, Marsena, and Memekan, and the seven princes of Me, Medea, and Persia, which saw the king's face and which sat first in the kingdom. Which, what shall be done unto the queen Vashti according to the law, because she hath not performed the commandment of the king Ahasuerus by the chamberlains? And Me Memekan answered before the king and the princes, Vashti the queen hath not done wrong to the king only, but also to all the princes and to all the people that are all in the provinces of King Ahasuerus. For this deed of the queen shall come abroad unto all the women, they'll all hear about it, so that they shall despise their husbands in their eyes when it shall be reported. The king Ahasuerus commanded Vashti the queen to be brought in before him, but she came not. Likewise shall the ladies of Persia and Medea say this unto all the king's princes which have heard of the deed of the queen. Thus shall there arise too much contempt and wrath. If it please the king, let there go a royal commandment from him, and let it be written among the law of the Persians and the Medes, that it be not altered, that Vashti come no more before King Ahasuerus, and let the king give her royal estate unto another that is better than she. And when the king's decree which he shall make shall be published throughout all the empire, for it is great, all the wise shall give it to their husband's honor, both to great and small. And the saying pleased the king and the princes, and the king did according to the word of Memekon. For he sent letters unto all the king's provinces, and to every province according to the writing thereof, and to every people after their language, that every man should bear rule in his own house, and that it should be published according to the language of every people. Man, talk about equal rights. Uh uh, didn't happen those days. You had a king, you didn't mess around. After these things, when the wrath of King Ahasuerus was appeased, he remembered Vashti and what she had done and what was decreed against her. Then said the king's servants that ministered unto him, Let there be fair young virgins sought for the king. Figures. Now we've got the bachelor. <laughs> And let the king appoint officers in all the provinces of his kingdom, that they may gather together all the fair young virgins unto Shushan the palace, to the house of the women, unto the custody of he Hege, the king's chamberlain, keeper of the women, and let their things for purification be given them. And let the maiden which pleases the king be queen instead of Vashti. And the thing pleased the king, and he did so. And we have now the bachelor and the bachelorette. <laughs> Now in Shushan, the palace where was a certain Jew whose name was Mordecai, the son of Jair, the son of Shimei, 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 son of Kish, a Benjamite, who had, or Benjamin, who had been carried away from Jerusalem with the captivity which had been carried away with Jeconiah, king of Judah, Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, had carried away. And he brought up Hadassah, that is, Esther. Esther! 
Esther, yay! See, you're supposed to say yay whenever Esther's in here, so, well, anyway, it's a long story. Where you go, ah, or ooh, I forget which way it went. But anyways, long story, we'll just keep going. We'll try to get through this. <laughs> Have patience. Yeah, Lord, don't do it. And he brought up Hadassah, that is, Esther, his uncle's daughter, for she had neither father nor mother, and the maid was fair and beautiful, whom Mordecai, when her father and mother were dead, took for his own daughter. So it came to pass when the king's commandment and his decree was heard, and when many maidens were gathered together into Shushan the palace to the custody of Haggai, that Esther was brought also into the king's house to the custody of Haggai, keeper of the women. And the maiden pleased him, and she obtained kindness of him, and he speedily gave her the things for purification which such things belonged to her, and seven maidens which were meet to be given her out of the king's house, and he preferred her and her maids unto the best palace of the house of the women. Esther had not showed her people, nor her kindred, for Mordecai had charged her that she should not show it. And Mordecai walked every day before the court of the women's house to know how Esther did and what should become of her. Now when every maid's turn was come to was come to go into the king Ahasuerus, after that she had been twelve months according to the manner of women, for so were the days of their purification accomplished, to wit, six months with oil of myrrh, and six months with sweet odors, and other things for the purification of the women, they really knew how to paint the barn. <laughs> then thus came every maiden unto the king. Whatsoever she desired was given her to go with her out of the house of the women unto the king's house. In the evening she went, and on the morrow she returned into the second house of the women, to the custody of Shajgaz, the king's chamberlain, which kept the concubines. She came in unto the king no more, except the king delighted in her, and that she were called by name. Now, when the turn of Esther, the daughter of Abihail, the uncle of Mordecai, who had taken her for his daughter, was come to go into unto the king, she required nothing but went Haggai, the king's chamberlain, the keeper of the women, appointed. And Esther obtained favor in the sight of all them that looked upon her. So Esther was taken unto king Ahasuerus into his house royal in the tenth month, which is the month Tebeth, in the seventh year of his reign. And the king loved Esther above all the women. Oh, it's a love story. And she obtained grace and favor in his sight, more than all the virgins, so that she set the royal crown upon her head. Notice it wasn't crown royal. And made her queen instead of Vashti. Then the king made a great feast unto all his princes and his servants, even Esther's feast. And he made a release to the provinces and gave gifts according to the state of the king. Hear, hear. Celebrate Esther's nomination and becoming queen. Good thing that's salty. Man, I'll be drinking a lot of water after that. And when the virgins were gathered together the second time when Mordecai sat in the king's gate, Esther had not yet showed her kindred nor her people as Mordecai had charged her. For Esther did the commandment of Mordecai, like it's when she was brought up with him. In those days when Mordecai sat in the king's gate, two of the king's chamberlains, Bigtha and Teresh, of those who kept the door, were wrought and sought to lay hand on the king Ahasuerus. And the thing was known to Mordecai, who told it to, unto Esther the queen, and Esther certified the king thereof in Mordecai's name. In other words, told it. And when inquisition was made of the matter, it was found out. Therefore, they were both hanged on a tree, and it was written in the book of the Chronicles before the king. Don't plot against the king. Let that be a lesson to you that don't like President Obama. <laughs> you got to apply it. I mean, it is the book of Esther. After those things did King Ahasuerus promote Haman, the son of Hamadatha, the Agagite, and advanced him and set his seat above all the princes that were with him. And all the king's servants that were in the king's gate bowed and revered Haman, Haman, for the king had so commanded concerning him. But Mordecai bowed now, bowed not, nor did reverence to him. Then the king's servants which were in the king's gate said unto Mordecai, Why transgressest thou the king's commandment? Now it came to pass when they spoke daily unto him, and he hearkened not unto them, that they told Haman to see whether Mordecai's matters would stand, for he had told them that he was a Jew. And when Haman saw that Mordecai bowed not, nor did him reverence, then was Haman full of wrath. And he thought scorn to lay hands on Mordecai alone, for they had showed him the people of Mordecai. Wherefore, Haman sought to destroy all the Jews that were throughout the whole kingdom of Ahasuerus, even the people of Mordecai. 
In the first month, that is the month of Nisan, in the twelfth year of the king of Hadrath, they cast Pur, that is, the lot, before Haman from day to day and from month to month through the twelfth month, that is, the month of Adar. Adar. And Haman said unto king of Hadrath, there is a certain people scattered abroad and dispersed among the people in all the provinces of that kingdom, and their laws are diverse from all the people. Neither keep they the king's laws, therefore it is not the king's profit to suffer them. When people tell me about Sharia law, I always think about, so if you're going to worry about Sharia law, are you going to worry about Jewish law? Well, <laughs> let this be a lesson to you. Watch out what you're saying, because if you take out Sharia, you're going to go after Jewish law too. If it please the king, let it be written that they may be destroyed, and I will pay 10,000 talents of silver to the hands of those that have the charge of the business to bring it to the king's treasuries. And the king took his ring from his hand and gave it to him, Haman, son of Hamadatha, the Agagite, the Jews' enemy. And the king said unto Haman, The silver is given to thee, the people also, to do with them as it seems good to you. Then were the king's scribes called on the thirteenth day of the first month that was written according to all that Haman had commanded unto the king's lieutenants and to the governors, and they were over every province and to the rulers of every people of every province according to the writing thereof, and to every people after their language in the name of King Ahadras was it written and sealed with the king's ring. It went everywhere. <laughs> and the letters were sent by post unto the king's provinces to destroy, to kill, and to cause to perish all Jews. All both young and old, little children, women, in one day, even upon the thirteenth day of the twelfth month, which is the month of Adar, to take the spoil of them for a prey. Uh-oh. The copy of the writing for a commandment to be given to every province was published and to all the people that they should be ready against that day. The post went out, being hastened by the king's commandment, and the decree was given in Shushan, the palace. And the king and Haman sat down to drink. But the city of Shushan was perplexed. Eh-eh. Uh -uh. I don't like you, I don't like you, I don't know if I like you, are we going to shoot you? When Mordecai perceived all that was done, Mordecai rent his clothes and put on sackcloth of ashes and went out to the midst of the city and cried with a loud and bitter cry. And it came before the king's gate, for none might enter into the king's gate clothed with sackcloth. And in every province where the sword of the king's commandment, and as the tree came, there was a great mourning among the Jews, and fasting and weeping and wailing, and many lay in sackcloth and ashes. Woe is me! So Esther's maids and her chamberlains came and told it to her. Then was the queen exceedingly grieved, and she sent Raymond to clothe Mordecai and to take away his sackcloth from him, but he received it not. Then called Esther for Hatak, one of the king's chamberlains, whom he had appointed to attend upon her, and gave him a commandment to Mordecai to know what it was and why it was. So Hatak went forth to Mordecai into the street of the city, which was before the king's gate. And Mordecai told him all that had happened unto him, and some of the money that Haman had promised to pay to the king's treasuries for the Jews and to destroy them. Also, he gave him a copy of the writing of the decree that was given at Shushan to destroy them, to show it unto Esther, and to declare it unto her, and to charge her that she should go in unto the king to make supplication unto him, and to make request before him for her people. And Hatak came and told Esther the words of Mordecai. Again Esther spoke unto Hatak, and gave him commandment unto Mordecai. Tit for tat, tat for tit. In other words, it's going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And the king's servants and the people of all the king's provinces do know that whatsoever, whether a man or woman, shall come unto the king into the inner court who is not called, there is one law of his to put him to death, except such to whom the king shall hold out the golden scepter, that he may live. But I have not been called to come in unto the king these thirty days. And they told Mordecai Esther's words. Then Mordecai commanded to answer Esther, Think not with thyself that thou shalt escape in the king's house, more than all the Jews. For if thou altogether holdst thy peace at this time, then shall there be enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. But if you and thy house shall be destroyed, and who knows whether thou art come into the kingdom for such a time as this. In other words, you, if you try to hide it, guess what? You'll get wiped out, but if you aren't the deliverer, someone else even better and bigger is going to come along that's going to deliver us. Then Esther bade them return Mordecai to answer. Go, gather together all the Jews that are present in Shushan and fast ye for me, and neither eat nor drink three days, night or day. I also my maidens will fast likewise, and so will I go to the king, which is not according to the law, and if I perish, I perish. Bummer, dude. So Mordecai went his way and did according to all that Esther had commanded him. 
Now it came to pass on the third day that Esther put on her royal apparel and stood in the inner court of the king's house over against the king's house, and the king sat upon the royal throne in that royal house over against the gate of the house. And it was so that when the king saw Esther, the queen, standing in the court, that she obtained favor in his sight. And the king held out to Esther the golden scepter that was in his hand, so Esther drew near and touched the top of the scepter. Woohoo! That's worth it. <laughs> Told you it was a love story. Then said the king unto her, What wilt thou, Queen Esther, and what is thy request? It shall be given unto thee and to half of my kingdom. And the king answered, If it seem good unto the king, let the king and Haman come this day into the banquet that I have prepared for. Then the king said, Cause Haman to make haste, that he may do as Esther has said. So the king and Haman came to the banquet, and that Esther had prepared. And the king said unto Esther at the banquet of wine, What is thy petition? And it shall be granted thee. And what is thy request? Even to the half of the kingdom shall it be performed. Then answered Esther and said, My petition and my request is... If I have found favor in the sight of the king, and if it please the king to grant my petition and to perform my request, let the king and Haman come to the banquet that I shall prepare for them, and I will do more, and I will do tomorrow as the king has said. Then went Haman forth that day joyful and with a glad heart. But when Haman saw Mordecai in the king's gate, that he stood not up nor moved for him, he was full of indignation against Mordecai. Nevertheless, Haman refrained himself, and when he came home, he sent and called for his friends and Zeresh his wife. And Haman told them of the glory of his riches and the multitude of his children, and all things wherein the king had promoted him, and how he had advanced him over the princes and the servants of the kings. Haman said, however, Yea, Esther the queen did not let man go in with the king unto the banquet that she had prepared but myself, and tomorrow am I invited unto her also with the king. Yet all this avails me nothing, so as long as I see Mordecai the Jew sitting in the gate. Then said Zeresh his wife and all his friends unto him, Let a gallows be made of fifty cubits high, and tomorrow... Speak thou unto the king that Mordecai may be hanged thereon, and then go in merrily with the king unto the banquet. And the king pleased Haman, and he caused the gallows to be made. Oh, oh, hangman. On that day could not the king sleep, and he commanded to bring the book of the records of the chronicles that they be read before the king, as we're doing now. And that's why we read this, and it's supposed to be a tradition that you read it, or a celebration. And it was found written that Mordecai had told of Bigthana and Teresh, two of the king's chamberlains, the keepers of the door who sought to lay hands on the king Ahasuerus. And the king said, What honor and dignity hath been done to Mordecai for this? Then said the king's servant that ministered unto him, There is nothing done for him. And the king said, Who is in the court? Now Haman was come into the outward court of the king's house to speak unto the king to hang Mordecai on the gallows that he had prepared for him. And the king's servant said unto him, Behold, Haman standeth in the court. And the king said, Let him come in. So Haman came in, and the king said unto him, What shall be done unto the man whom the king delighteth to honor? Now Haman thought in his heart, To whom the king delighteth to do honor more than to myself. Of course he means me. And the king answered the king, and Haman answered the king, For the man whom the king delighteth to honor, let the royal apparel be brought, which the king uses to wear, and the horse that the king rideth upon, and the crown royal which is set upon his head. And let this apparel and horse be delivered into the hand of one of the king's most noble princes, that they may array the man without whom the king delighteth to honor, and bring him on horseback through the streets of the city, and proclaim before him, Thus shall it be done to the man whom the king delighteth to honor. Then the king said to Haman, Make haste, and take the apparel and the horse, as thou hast said, and do even so to Mordecai the Jew, that sitteth at the king's gate, and let nothing fail of all that has been spoken. <laughs> and you think God's not in control. The ways of man are always some plan, but the ways of God will always intervene. Then to Haman, then took Haman the apparel and the horse and arrayed Mordecai and brought him on horseback through the street of the city and proclaimed before him, Thus shall it be done unto the man whom the king delighteth to honor. And Mordecai came again to the king's gate, but Haman hastened to his house mourning and having his head covered. And Haman told Zeresh his wife, all his friends, everything that had been fallen him. Then said his wise man and Zeresh his wife unto him, If Mordecai be of the seed of the Jews, before whom thou hast begun to fall, then thou shalt not prevail against him, but surely, but shalt surely fall before him. And when they were yet talking with him, came the king's chamberlains, and hastened to bring Haman unto the banquet that Esther had prepared. So the king and Haman came to the banquet with Esther the queen. And the king said again unto Esther on the second day of the banquet of the wine, where is thy petition, Queen Esther? And it shall be granted thee, and what is thy request? And it shall be performed, even unto the half of my kingdom. 
Then Esther the queen answered and said, If I have found favor in thy sight, O king, and if it please the king, let my life be given me at my petition and my people at my request. For we are sold, I and my people, to be destroyed, to be slain, and to perish. But if we had been sold for bondmen and bondwomen, I had held my tongue, although my, the enemy could not countervail the king's damage. Then the king Ahasuerus answered and said unto Esther the queen, Who is he, where is he, that durst presume in his heart to do such a thing? And Esther said, The adversary and enemy is this wicked Haman. Then Haman was afraid before the king and the queen. And the king, arising from the banquet of wine in his wrath, went into the palace garden, and Haman stood up to make request for his life to Esther the queen, for he saw that there was evil determined against him by the king. Then the king returned out of the palace garden into the palace of the banquet of wine, and Haman was fallen before the bed whereupon Esther was. Then said the king, Will he force the queen also before me in the house? As the words went out of the king's mouth, they covered Haman's face. And Harbanah, one of the king's chamberlains, said before the king, Behold, also the gallows fifty cubits high, which Haman had made for Mordecai, who had spoken good for the king, standeth in the house of Haman. Then the king said, Hang him on it. So they hanged Haman on the gallows that he had prepared for Mordecai. Then was the king's wrath pacified. <laughs> Sometimes your own devices work against you. Funny how you reap what you sow. Most of the time, when you accuse somebody, you're recused of your own self. Hmm. On that day did King Ahasuerus give the house of the Haman Jews and me from unto Esther the queen. And Mordecai came before the king, for Esther had told what he was unto her. And the king took off his ring, which he had taken from Haman, and gave it unto Mordecai. And Esther sent Mordecai over the house of Haman. And Esther spoke yet again before the king, and fell down to his feet, and besought him with tears to put away the mischief of Haman the Agagite, and his devices that he had devised against the Jews. Then the king held out the golden scepter toward Esther, so Esther arose and stood before the king, and said, If it please the king, and if I have found favor in his sight, and the thing seem right before the king, and I, am, and I be pleasing in his eyes, let it be written to reverse the letters devised by Haman, the son of Hamadatha the Agagite, which he wrote to destroy the Jews which are in all the king's provinces. For how can I endure to see the evil which shall come upon my people, or how shall I endure to see the destruction of my kingdom? Then the king Ahasuerus said unto Esther the queen, and to Mordecai the Jew, Behold, I have given Esther the house of Haman, and him they have hanged upon the gallows, because he laid his hand upon the Jews. Write you also for the Jews, as it liketh you in the king's name, and seal it with the king's ring, for the writing which is written in the king's name, and sealed with the king's ring, may no man reverse. Man, I'm getting tired. Then were the king's scribes called at the time of the third month, that is the month of Sivan, on the three and twentieth day thereof, and it was written according to all that Mordecai commanded unto the Jews and to the lieutenants and deputies and rulers of the province which are in from India, from Ethiopia, and they have been 127 provinces, and to every province according to the writing thereof, and unto every people after the language, and to the Jews according to the writing and according to the language. And he wrote the king Harajah, and sealed with the king train, and sent letters by post on horseback and riders, on the golden camels and young dromedaries. Wherein the king granted the Jews, which were in every city, to gather themselves together, and to stand for their life, to destroy, to slay, and to cause to perish all power of the people and province that would assault them, both little ones and women, and to take the spoil of them for prey. Upon one day in all the provinces of King Harajah, namely upon the thirteenth day of the twelfth month, which was in the month of Adar. Yes, I know how to read this fast. <laughs> I, I've read this before when I had to do this in <laughs> a different setting. <laughs> I mean, with a bunch of Jews, you know, and they're all kind of like doing this. You know, sometimes you read it slow, and you have this big celebration. Sometimes they want to hurry up and go home, so you read it fast. The copy of the writing for a commandment will be given every province, which is published unto all the people, and that the Jews should be ready against that day, and to average and avenge themselves and deliver their enemies. So the post they rode upon the mules and the camels went out, being hastened to press by the king's commandments, and the decree was given to Shushan the palace. And Mordecai went out from the presence of the king in royal apparel, blue and white, and with a great crown of gold, and with a garment of fine linen and purple, and the city of Shushan rejoiced and was glad. Aren't you glad? The Jews will live. The Jews had light and gladness and joy and honor. Woohoo! And in every province and every city, and whither the king's commandments and this decree came, and the Jews had joy and gladness and a feast and a good day, and many of the people of the land became Jews, and fear of the Jews fell upon them. Funny how people don't remember that part. And many of the people of the land became Jews. <laughs> Who says there's no such thing as proselytizing by Jews? <laughs> now in the twelfth month, that is the month of Adar, on the thirteenth day of the same, when the king's commandment and his decree drew near to put 
in execution in the day that the enemies of the Jews hoped to have power over them, though it was turned to the contrary, and the Jews had ruled over them that hated them, the Jews gathered together together in their cities throughout all the provinces of the king Hazarus to lay hand on such as sought their hurt, and no man could withstand them, for fear of them came, fell upon all the people. And all the rulers of the provinces, and the lieutenants, and the deputies, and officers of the king helped the Jews, because the fear of Mordecai fell upon them. For Mordecai was great in the king's house, and his fame went out throughout all the provinces, for this man Mordecai waxed greater and greater. This the Jews smote all their enemies with the stroke of the sword and slaughter and destruction and did what they would unto those that hated them. And in Shushan the palace the Jews slew and destroyed five hundred men. In Parshadatha, Dalphon, and Aspatha, for Poratha and Adalia and Aridatha, and Parmashta and Arasai and Aridatha and Vajasta, Vajasta, but it's a little easier in the evening. Anyways, the ten sons of Haman, the sons of Hamadatha, and the enemy of the Jews, slew they, but on the spoil they did not invade their hand. And on that day the number of those that were slain in Shushan, the palace, those brought before the king. And the king said unto Esther, the queen, the Jews have slain and destroyed five hundred men in Shushan, the palace. And the ten sons of Haman, what have they done in the rest of the king's promises? Now what is thy petition, and it shall be granted thee? Or what is thy request further, and it shall be done? Then said Esther, if it please the king, let it be granted to the Jews which are in Shushan to do tomorrow also according to this day's decree, and let Haman's ten sons be hanged before the gallows. And the king commanded, so it be done. And the decree was given at Shushan, and they hanged Haman's ten sons. For the Jews that were in Shushan gathered together on the fourteenth day, also into the month of Adar, and slew three hundred men at Shushan, but on the prey they laid not their hand. But the other Jews that were in the king's provinces gathered themselves together and stood for their lives, and had rest from their enemies, and slew their foes seventy and five thousand, for which they laid not their hands on the prey. On the thirteenth day of the month of Adar, and on the fourteenth day, the same rested, they made it a day of feasting and of gladness. Which is why we're indulging. <laughs> if this is indulging, believe me. I'm glad that I'm not given to these things. <laughs> But the Jews that were in Shushan assembled together on the thirteenth day and on the fourteenth day thereof, and on the fifteenth day of the same they rested and made it a day of feasting and gladness. Therefore all the Jews of the village that dwelt in the unwalled towns made the fourteenth day of the month of Adar a day of gladness and feasting, and a good day and ascending of portions one to another. And Mordecai wrote these things and sent letters unto all the Jews who were in all the provinces of the king of Hazra, both night and far, to establish this among them that they should keep in the fourteenth day of the month of Adar and the fifteenth day of the same yearly. As the days wherein the Jews rested from their enemies, and the month in which would turn from to them from sorrow to joy, and from mourning into a good day, and that they should make their days of peace and joy, and send their portions one to another, and gifts to the poor. And the Jews undertook to do so as they had begun, and as Mordecai had written unto them, because Haman, the son of Hamadatha, the Agagite of the enemy of all the Jews, had devised against the Jews to destroy them, and had cast per, that is, the lot, to consume them, and to destroy them. But when Esther came before the king, he commanded by letters and by his wicked device, which he had devised against the Jews, should return upon his own head, and that he and his son should be hanged on the gallows. Wherefore they call these days Purim, after the name of Pur. Therefore, for all the words of this letter, and of that which they have been concerning this matter, of which they had come upon unto them, the Jews ordained, and it took upon them, upon their seed, and upon all such as joined themselves unto them, so as it should not fail that there should be keep these two days according to the writing and according to their appointment every year. And that these days should be remembered and kept throughout every generation, every family, every province, every city, and in those days of Purim should not fail among them Jews, nor the memorial of them that perish from their seed. Then Esther the queen and the daughter of Abihail, and Mordecai the king, Mordecai the Jew, wrote with all authority to confirm this second letter of Purim. And he sent these letters unto all the Jews unto the 127 provinces of the kingdom of Hazarus, with words of peace and truth to confirm these days of Purim and the times appointed according to as Mordecai the Jew and Esther the queen had enjoined them and as they had decreed for themselves and for their seed in the matters of the fastings and their cry. And the decree of Esther confirmed these matters of Purim and it was written in the book. And the king of Hazarus laid a tribute upon the land and upon the isles of seas and all the acts of the power and his might and declaration of the greatness of Mordecai were unto the king advanced him. Now are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Medea and Persia? For Mordecai the Jew was next unto King Ahasuerus and great among the Jews and accepted the multitude of his brethren, seeking the wealth of his people and speaking peace unto all his seed. Ah. One more year done. So you see, even as we're told, do this in remembrance of me. As Jesus said, as often as you take this bread and drink this wine, you do this to declaring my coming again until I come and eat it with you in the kingdom. Likewise, in Jewish mindsets, salvation is remembered 
according to that which is written in the book that which is the word of God so when Jesus comes they will be looking for literally the signs of his markings that would be the Messiah because they'll see him coming as riding in on a white horse and that's what they're looking for but what they won't recognize and they won't know and because they still to this day don't know they will see him as more as not being perfect because they'll ask him on that day when they are rescued from the valley of the ghetto when they are rescued from the devastation and the antichrist and the false messiah and false prophet and the world nations all gathered together brought there for the wrath of God they'll ask him who are you and he will say who he is you know, but they'll ask him what are these markings on you he says these are those that which I received in the house of my brethren and then they will warn and literally fall flat on their face at that time and then will be fulfilled the prophecy that said that all Israel shall be saved for in that day they'll recognize who did it because nobody doubts who literally killed Messiah or put him on the cross because it was you and I but the bottom line for all of the world to be saved they must recognize that they did it so when all Israel is to be saved Israel must recognize they did it just like for you to be saved for you to have salvation you must recognize you your sins put Jesus on the cross and he died but in the meantime, celebrate Purim. Today is a day that is, let me be perfectly blunt, around the world there are Jews celebrating. And believe me, tonight it basically starts, because it always starts at night, that um, in every home little children are going to be eating all kinds of things, you know, and playing games and doing hangmen and doing all kinds of readings of the Megillah and doing a parade and there will be lots of partying going on. It gets crazy. <laughs> it's one of the few times that Jewish people get really, really drunk. <laughs> I'm not <laughs> um, getting drunk. I'm just rejoicing in that, which I know that there is a celebration with which all Jews everywhere will one day come together in Messiah and Jesus and know that Klal Israel, every Jew will feel in his heart the unity that we feel as brethren in the body of Christ. And until that day, Hak Sameach.